welcome back everybody i hope everybody's doing well i hope everyone's having an excellent summer because i am it's the favorite time of the year for me personally um in today's episode we're going to be dealing with the engine hopefully we can do much as possible today um we'll see how far we get okay i'll try to do much as possible today all right so hopefully we can get intake carburetor in get the fan covers in hopefully um the most important thing I want to do today is to get this guy in. This guy is again, this is from RC Models in the UK. Big, big shout out to them man, for doing things like and at a very reasonable price. So I'm very happy. Hopefully this will be going on today. This is just a clutch fan to cool down your clutch a little bit. Yeah, let's take this out. Okay, I did unbox this in my unboxing video. You get some hardware with it. Here you go. Looks really nicely done, man. I have to say. It's really nicely done. Okay, so hopefully we can get this on today. Alright, we've got our carburetor. This is what came with the engine. It's a 1191 carburetor. I don't know if it's good or not, bro. This is my first ever carburetor. So we, we, we shall see. But it should be alright man because both the show he's been running his 45 and it's been running fine man I saw it. It's ripping up the grass and shit man isn't it so we shall see if it's good or not okay. I'm sure it should be fine. Everything is looking nicely together. It's wall bro. There you go. So I don't think I should be having any problems with this. And if we need to upgrade it later on I don't know with the 990 or something I don't, we'll do that later. But for now we're gonna run with this so hopefully we can put this on today as well let's talk intake intake manifold quickly okay so this is the stock one but this is this guy came with the engine all right this, this was on here this comes stock now when i ordered the engine i ordered this as well because i know these guys they're not that good they sort of crack and you get air leaks and stuff so i ordered this guy this is specifically made for the Roven 45 okay and would you believe it it's smaller this guy is smaller okay so where the intake is this bit is smaller okay let me show you guys okay here I've made a template of the actual intake here okay and if you guys look closely if you can see all right where the masking tape goes around you see all these silver bits basically that's how small it is okay compared to this guy all right so I will not be and if you look at the front you see the hole here the intake is smaller it's much smaller man so I will not be using this okay because I go do a bit more work to it you know what I'm saying I'm gonna have to file all of this down okay basically I got to correct it I got to file all of this down and then I'm gonna have to make this hole bigger okay so it matches with this because but as of now this hole is smaller than my v-stack so that's not good do you know what i'm saying so it's going to be when the air comes through the v-stack it's going to come and hit this wall i don't really want that to be honest with you so i will not be using this i'll go with this for now okay and in the future i'm thinking maybe what botage recommends um the rb innovations intake manifold for the g320 i think that's what i'm going to go for in the future but for now I'm going to run it and I'm just going to have to keep an eye on it so I don't crack it or anything. I've got my usual menagerie of tools. This guy, let me tell you about this guy. Okay, this guy, um, I did um, talk about this quite a bit in my unboxing of the, um, when I did the unboxing for my low C5 parts. Big thumbs up RC models. Big shout out man in it. You guys are looking after the fifth scalers. So this is a clutch tool. All right, especially if you have this Roven 45, you can see the spark plug, it goes in at a 45 degree angle, so you can't really use a piston stop on this. And even if you could use a piston stop, you've got chances of damaging the piston man in it. So what's the point? All right, so this, I think personally, this is essential for every single fifth scaler. All right, everybody should have this man in it, clutch stop tool. Long story short, this was recommended to me by Botogel and he's got a Horizon Hobby Dynamite one. So I went on the website and it was discontinued, man. And it, disappointment, commiseration. 
All right, but then luckily I went on to RC Models and they had it, man, in it. And it comes in my two favorite colors, silver and black. So that's a win-win. Thank you, RC Models, once again. All right, and I'm sure you guys saw this in the previous um, unboxing. It's the DDM Racing Pro Throttle Linkage for the low C5. So you see this little guy here? This has to go on the carburetor, basically. So hopefully I can do that today as well. Okay, nice piece of kit, man. The way they've done it, it's really nice. I really like it. Okay. Uh, okay, so I don't know if I've told you guys about the clutch bell I'm using. This is the 30 degree north clutch bell. It's all nicely drilled out, lightened, so it should stay nice and cool. Um, there's nothing more to say about it, really. So this is the clutch bell I'm using. Okay, so first job of the day. We're going to get this Bartlone Racing billet ignition coil spacer so that's the part number if anybody's interested ee414 okay this was recommended to me by um, elite rc thumbs up buddy i love your channel okay so he used it on one of his builds and i think for me man i'm, I'm really bad with things like this i always lose spacers and washers and screws i always lose everything so this i think is going to help me not lose the little spacers do you know what i'm saying so hopefully this is going to be a nice upgrade for me anyway you know so i don't lose everything so we're going to be putting this on today all right and again i can't thank brother boltagel enough man in it for pointing this out to me okay this is the zanoa flywheel air gap gauge tool the part number is dr330 from ddm racing man like when i made my mind up to get into fifth scale I watched a bunch of like build videos all right on youtube and everybody's talking about business cards man i'm like how the hell man every single business card is different do you know what i'm saying they're all different thicknesses and then finally i stumbled like on both the shows channel and finally my man took out the tool and he was like this is what you need to use i'm like yeah man and uh, this is one of the first things i bought when i when i decided yeah i'm gonna go fifth scale First thing I one of the first things I bought was this tool, man, in it because I knew I was gonna come to this stage. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm gonna have to mess about with the coil and the flywheel, and I'm gonna have to gap it again. So this highly recommended. Every fifth scaler should have this to do things properly, man, in it. How Bortojo says it's like a gentleman, man. That's this is what you need. All right. So we're gonna be using this today, and we've got another precision tool here. Okay, these like these kind of tools are like my favorite things in the world, man. Any, they're the best. Do you know what I'm saying? This is a um, Tack Life torque wrench. To be honest with you, I don't have no use for this. All right, I did when I had like I was in the cabin industry. I had a lot of cars. Let me open up and show you guys. Here we go. Okay, so there it is. It's the Tack Life HCW4A. That's the model number for it anybody's interested but yeah man i love tools like this things like this precision tools are one of my favorite things in the world man in it i love it okay and this guy does obviously does inch pounds and newton meters in the uk we mostly use newton meters man in it it's just easier you know what i'm saying but today i'm going to be using inch pounds how about that okay i'm going to use the both of method and do it in inch pounds first time i'm using inch pounds let's see how it goes all right so this is my torque wrench i'm going to be using today leave that there and here yeah, let me show you guys look at this guy this is the adapter i've made okay i just went into my socket wrench kit just took out the perfect size for this little guy this adapter this is just a magnetic hex adapter okay and i just stuck him on here now i can use it on my torque wrench easy as that man can't be easy than that okay so that's my adapter i'm going to be using with my torque wrench today there you go and this is how it fits on there perfect you see quite happy with that so i can just pop my bits in and take them out one time all right so that's what we're going to be using today let's get rid of this and let's get started okay another important job today kill switch Okay, I'm not going to do the entire wiring of it today. I'm just going to put the little wires that's supposed to go on here. So what I'm going to be doing today with the kill switch is just putting this guy on. If I can ever get this out. Okay, 
so I'm just going to be putting this guy on today alright so I'm ready to go I don't have to mess about ok just quickly wanted to mention something about the skill switch I hope you guys can see see these jumpers here if you're using a lipo like me you got to take both jumpers out alright and if you're using a 6 volt, 5 volt or a 4 volt please check the manual don't just run it you know what I'm saying because it's not going to have a lipo cut out so you might damage your batteries so just be careful make sure you read the manual properly so you know what, what the hell you're doing but for me lipo both jumpers out okay so another thing I forgot to mention in last week's unboxing was about this guy this is a GMD alright it's from model design studios I got this from Aliexpress man alright let's just keep it simple there is no part number people but just if anybody's interested in this just type in model design studios alright and it should come up okay so you guys know I'm using the Roven all aluminium CNC easy pull starter so this guy okay it it fits it's perfect no problems but the only thing was I did not know how thick this guy was alright I didn't know if this guy was gonna fit or right, I don't even know if it fits I haven't tried it I don't know if the normal outerwear fits on this alright so this guy is for a plastic stock pull starter okay so I don't know if this guy was gonna fit you know what let's let's try it now let's see if this guy fits comes with some velcro that's gonna come in handy bloody hell that looks small man oh shit actually this might fit this yeah I think this will fit look I'll stretch it over oh wow and look at it and look at it nice sexy lady on the front perfect all right, so this, this this fits. Okay, so if anybody's interested in getting this, not to worry, you can use the normal outerwears for the pull starters, the normal plastic ones, and they fit. Thank God for that. So now I can just get the normal outerwears and they will fit. Thank God, because I didn't want to, yeah, I didn't want to spend like 25 quid and then say, oh shit, it doesn't fit on here. So this this was, I think, half the price, man, isn't it? I think it was like 12 or 13 pounds, this guy here. That's about $15, man. So, yeah. That, I can take a risk on. This is the thing about RC, man. You've got to try things out and see if they work out for you or not. So, that's another thing I forgot to tell you guys about. So, that all worked out well. All right, I didn't waste my money. I can use this. All right. And I've got my confirmation so I can get normal outerwears and they will fit on here. So, that's a good thing. All right. All right. So, the first thing we're going to do is take off this pull starter key slash pull starter plate whatever you want to call it so this has got to come off so we get to use our banging clutch tool yippee all right first things first let's take this clutch bell housing off put the right no get this off these guys are just finger tight anyway from the last time I put it on just to test fit it so don't be scared everyone they're gonna be talked down properly okay so I just took my clutch bell housing out this is how it looks it comes with a banging o-ring as you can see nice solid CNC so I'm very happy with this the only thing is the bearings are not sealed that's the only thing that bothered me a little bit but I can change them in the future so that's not a problem alright let's move on ok so get our clutch tool ok so we've got our clutch locked in we've got our two bolts in there to hold this in place alright let's just turn it around ok I wish I was filming this when I did it alright so would you believe it me all right i just took this off by hand okay so that's how loose this was i'm not saying it would come off because each time you pull it it turns to the right do you know what i'm saying so it tightens on itself i'm not saying it would have come off but you shouldn't be able to take this off without using any tools man in it look i'm just using my hands and it's 
Whee! It's coming off. There you go. So look, it just came off. All right. So that's why it's very important to go over your shit, man, isn't it? What what Boulder's job basically says: go over your shit. Just put a bit of masking tape there to keep this bloody tool in place. It keeps falling out. Okay. Let's get back to this. Let's get this washer off somehow. This washer is actually harder to take off than the bloody key. Don't want to damage my flywheel, so I'm going really gently, just squeeze, trying to squeeze this bloody. Don't know what the hell. Did they super glue it in place or something? There we go. Okay. Here we go. Broken it loose, so I don't know what the hell. There we go. We got a winner. Okay, so this nut here for the pull starter key is a 13 mil okay socket wrench all right your clutch tool at the other side make sure it doesn't slip bloody hell that's one there okay so this nut is really tight so i'm going to give it a bit of heat heat it up okay now it should be good Here we go. Bloody hell, that was on there. Okay, so here we go. That's when that was in there. So they've used like tons and tons and tons of God knows what kind of Loctite, man. But yeah, it was on there, bruv. Like this nut was on there. But this guy was not on there. This was loose. So a weird mix. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, so the next job is to put the new key on, but before we do, we're going to put some Loctite on this nut. Alright, let's, but before that, let's clean it. Okay, as you can see, there's a bit of dirt there. Get rid of that, so the Loctite can actually do its job. Get some Loctite. Nice healthy amount. That's fine. There you go. So that's ready to go inside. Alright, so the next job I'm going to clean in here. Okay, so I've cleaned inside here. The crankshaft is nicely cleaned up. We're gonna get some Loctite. Okay, should be enough. Get a new key. Start screwing in. Try not to cross thread it. Go slow at first. Okay, it's not looking bad. All right, we're in. That's it, people. Just like that. Well, like I just say, it looks amazing, man. Look at it, bling, bling. What a shame we won't be able to see it. It's all inside. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to crank it down, and we're going to move to the other side. Okay, so the next job, we have to take this clutch out so we can put this clutch fan on. All right, so let's quickly do that. Okay. okay, they were pretty snug, not bad. Let's take this one off. Okay. They were pretty snug, I'm not going to lie. I don't think they were going to come off anytime soon. Okay, here we go. So, put the screws out. You can see, got the washers. The washer's supposed to be facing down. These ones are facing up, so that's weird. Let's check this as one as well. Try and go here. This one was facing down, as you can see. You see, this one's facing down, but this one was facing up. 
sure it's supposed to be the other way. Never mind. Watch tool off. Just leave that there for now. Okay, there's our clutch. Got a bit of dirt in there, look. Presents from China again. Okay, good job I took that out. Okay, there's our washers. So one was put on correctly and one was put on the other way. So good job I'm in here man. I'm checking this stuff. I can do things my way, do you understand what I'm saying? Instead of somebody else. Here we go. Put my washers out. And it's dirty as hell in here man. What the hell is this? I don't know but anyway let's move on. Let's take this guy out. But we're gonna have to hold the flywheel there's nothing holding the crankshaft now so let me just quickly do that okay everyone so this is how I did it I got a giant microfiber cloth held the flywheel and my engine tightly got my ratchet in here and I just went high did a karate move and it's come loose now all right so take this guy out Get my flywheel puller. Squeeze in. Here we go. This off. Okay. That's our clutch plate out. And I don't know if you guys can see man in it. I understand, you know, stuff gets dirty. What the, what the hell is this man? Look at it. Anyway, let's move on. First things first man, I'm going to clean inside here innit. I'm going to douse this in alcohol, clean it up. And I hope I don't have an oil leak or anything man innit. Alright everyone, so here's a closer look. I hope you guys can see now the difference from before. Gave you a good clean. Alright, first I went in there with alcohol and kitchen towels, then I got a microfiber cloth and I wiped it down properly, you know what I'm saying, now it's all nice and clean. Alright, so next we're going to lube up this seal, okay, it's another trick I got from Botagel, thanks brother, thumbs up Botagel. What you do, you get some silicone, alright, this is what I have at the moment, okay, and we're going to lube up this seal, here goes nothing. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it upside down for a bit and then I'm going to wipe off the excess. Okay, can you see? All the silicone in there, working in. Alright, so let's leave that for a minute. Okay, let it soak in and then we can wipe off the excess. So the next step is to put our fan on. Okay, there's only one way it can go on. Alright. Okay. That's looking nice man, that's looking tight, yes, okay, let's leave that there for a second, alright, so I got my brand new hardware, that's the old one, you can see it's all mash up, so we're going to get rid of that, I'm going to stick this guy in, get some lock tight. Okay, same again, so just like before, holding down my flywheel and my engine at the same time with this massive microfiber cloth and we're going to tighten this down. Alright, 
So now it's time to get the torque wrench out and we can torque this down. Okay, so I've got my torque wrench at 80 inch pounds. All right, so let's get this done. Okay, done. Done. Okay. It's looking nice, man. Looking solid. I'm liking this. Alright, All right, let's go. It's time to put a clutch back on. Okay. Get our washers. Washers in. Okay. Next, get a clutch, line it up, okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to clean these clutch screws and we're going to lock tight these, okay, so another thing I'm going to quickly do, uh, again it's another bolt gel recommendation, let's put a bit of graphite grease here, like really thin. All right, like n almost nothing. That's how Boltagel explained it, okay? So I'm gonna do that as well. And if you can see here, like this engine hasn't been run yet. And you can see, look, these screws are already degrading. So I'm gonna clean them up and put some graphite grease on here just to make it, you know, a bit smooth for riding. Okay, so like I said, almost nothing this much that's nothing okay do the next uh, it's still the same okay so I did with that tiny bit I did both all right so just a tiny bit that's all you need all right so ready to go now okay get a spring washer the this curved bit is supposed to go upwards towards the screw like that okay it's supposed to sit like that okay lock tight okay now it's a bit difficult doing it with one hand it will be easier for you guys if you've got both hands okay so that's one screw in let's get the other one done same again screw get your spring washer facing up towards the screw lock tight same again line it up there you go all right again both these screws 80 inch pounds my torque wrench is already set so I'm gonna go ahead and do that okay so I've got my clutch tool in here helping me out it's already paid for itself today that's all I've got to say man isn't it all right so we got our torque wrench so again 80 inch pounds Okay, easy as that, done. Done, 80 inch pounds. Okay, so the clutch is in, the clutch fan is in. Let's come around here. Okay, um, the pull starter key is in. All right, so the next job, we're gonna do with the coil now. All right, we're gonna get this guy in. Okay, we're gonna get the battle on racing ignition coil spacer. All right, everyone. As usual, I've run out of time. This video is getting way too long. So I'm gonna call it now. Stay tuned for episode 15, 2.0. That episode should be going up in a couple of days. So just before I go, I'd like to thank all my subscribers. You guys are awesome. Thanks for all the support. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. I've got tons of videos like this coming up. Once again, thank you everybody for watching and I'll speak to you guys next time. Take care.